chapter 14 of The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson, illustrated by Catherine Honesta, published by Osborne. And in the last chapter, Yuri, Mousetrap and Ianka were uh, travelling through the snowy woods looking for a hut. Mousetrap said that he could smell cooking and hear singing. No one else could hear it, but they'd believe him. They think they're going to one of Anatoly's huts, but as they've got there, somebody says they can smell bones. Mousetrap says he can smell bones. Human bones. Chapter 13. The house with chicken legs. It can't be real, I whisper, scanning the skull and bone fence for evidence it's fake. It smells real. Mousetrap's tail tightens around my neck. I was wrong to lead you here. We should go. I nod, but I don't move. I can't pull my gaze from the fence. Icicles drip from long chains of vertebra strung between upright poles. Skulls balance on top, candlelight creeping out between missing teeth and through empty eye sockets. The villagers tell stories about Yaga, witches who live in houses with chicken legs surrounded by skull and bone fences. In their stories, Yaga eat lost children and steal their souls. But in Anatoly's stories, Yaga aren't cannibals. They are linked with death though, so I've never been sure if they're good or bad. I look at the house behind the fence. It's small, like a log cabin, not unlike mine and Momochka's. I can't see any chicken legs, <coughs> and I picture Momochka shaking her head and telling me what nonsense that would be. But still, something about the house lifts the hairs on the back of my neck. The lines of the windows and door curve making the shape of a face. And as I stare, they change expression. Let's go! The mouse trap pushes my neck with his tiny paws. A fence of human bones is a sure sign you're not welcome here. I itch with curiosity about the house, and I ache to rest somewhere warm, but Mousetrap is right. The skull and bone fence is not a welcoming sight. I sigh and turn away, but as I do, the house screws up one side of its wooden face and winks. Did you see that? I gasp. But Mousetrap has disappeared into my pocket. And Yuri is lying down, facing the other way and quietly whining. The door creaks open, and a girl steps out. She's about my age, small and slight, with dark hair and big round eyes. I step behind the nearest tree and hold my breath. Hello, she calls. Are you lost? Do you need help? I stand stone still, hoping she'll think it was an animal she heard. She looks like an ordinary girl, and her words are friendly. But she lives in a winking house with a skeleton fence. She could be a yaga. She could be the kind who eats lost children. I curse myself for not leaving as soon as Mousetrap suggested it. Don't be scared. The bone gate rattles open and footsteps crunch towards me. My heart accelerates like a bird taking flight. Mousetrap trembles in my pocket. Yuri lowers his head to the ground. If she's a Yaga, I should run. And if she's not a Yaga, I should still run because I don't want her to see my legs. I can't face another reaction like Sasha's or any more stares that confirm I don't belong with people. The girl steps so close I hear her breathing. My leg muscles tighten like springs. And then they release, I try to sprint away, but my foot slips on slush and I fall backwards, smacking my head against a tree and landing hard on the ground, legs in the air. Pain shoots down my spine and my head rings. Are you all right? The girl leans over and offers me a hand. I'm Elena. She must see my bare legs. But she doesn't appear shocked or scared. She doesn't look at me like I'm different at all. Elena just smiles, a big wide smile that makes her whole face light up, and for some reason that brings tears to my eyes. 
bones clatter behind me and the groan and grate of moving wood echoes through the forest. Yuri scrambles to his feet. I try to do the same, thinking a tree's about to fall or, or a skeleton's about to jump on me or both. But my limbs aren't working, so I squeeze my eyes shut and brace for impact. Light runs across my eyelids, but nothing hits me. So I peep my eyes open again and flinch at the sight of one of the house's windows right above my head. What are you doing? Elena hisses at the house. You'll get into trouble again. The house swings up and away and a huge shadow falls over me. It's a massive foot, scaly like a bird's, but made of wood, and it plunges straight towards me. Stop, you dastardly witch house! Mousetrap darts up my shoulder and flashes his teeth. The foot hesitates. Then a, a clawed toe unfurls and pokes one of my legs. My muscles jump to life. I roll out of the way, but the rest of the wooden toes spread out and grab me around my waist. I scream as the foot grips me tight and lifts me like I weigh nothing at all. I'm vaguely aware of Mousetrap growling as he attacks the house's ankle. What's going on? An old woman's voice shouts from the porch above. House, put the girl down. My head spins as I sail through the air towards the front porch steps. Floorboards rise impossibly to cradle me as I land. Grey spots cloud my vision and I groan. I don't want to pass out. I can't pass out. Not now. This is a house with chicken legs. The home of a yaga who eats lost children and makes fences from their bones. I imagine my own skeleton becoming part of the fence and for a strange calm moment I wonder if my oversized bones would fit in with the rest or stand out like I do in life. Then Mousetrap nips my ear, bringing me back to the present. We're meant to be guiding. The older Yaga woman prods the porch canopy with a broom. She's short and round, wearing an angry scowl and a headscarf decorated with skulls. You should be scaring away living souls, not picking them up and putting them on your porch. When are you going to stop getting distracted by every little thing that stirs your curiosity and start taking your responsibilities as a Yaga house seriously? She needs help. Elena appears next to me. She puts her hand on my arm. She's frozen. She's wet through. And look at the elk. It's bleeding. Yuri is lying at the bottom of the porch steps, whining. I try to work out what's happened. Yuri hasn't moved towards the house, but the house has moved closer to Yuri. Oh, I hold my head to stop it spinning. Maybe this is all in my imagination, and if I hold my head tight enough, I'll wake up in bed without bare legs. None of this will ever have happened. Oh, for spirit's sake. The Yaga woman leans over me and frowns. Whatever state she was in before, she's worse now. Getting grappled by your great chicken feet is enough to send anyone into shock. Elena, get some blankets and tea, and, and you, she glares up at the house, open the gate again so I can finish guiding before we bring her inside. At the mention of being taken into the house, my heart starts thumping like a snow hare's foot. What if my story ends here, with me being eaten by Yaga, deep in the forest? Well, what if it does indeed? Because that is the end of the chapter. That's the end of chapter 13. Soon I shall read you chapter 14, but I shan't do it right now. So I shall say, you get on with what you need to do. I will see you soon. Be good. Look after each other and be kind.